His Imperial Majesty said that no one knows like what will strike the match. You understand when when speaking, even prophetically and 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 looking forward into future events in the whole world uh, situation, the Earth crisis. His Imperial Majesty Moa Anbesa Zem Negeda Yehuda. The conquering line of the tribe of Judah, his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, the elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia. He said, no one knows um, what or where, you know, where, where the match will be struck. You understand? The match will be struck that can really unravel the whole geopolitical uh, fabric. And, and this this whole um, this uh, seeming peace and safety um, illusion and the illusions, so many of the illusions you understand, especially with the the information, the rapid information exchange, and the rate of this information society and the ability to um, um, they shall go to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased, is what Donna L. Nabiu Donna, what Daniel's prophecy in Daniel's book actually speaks about and some have rightly looked at that word of Daniel about and they shall go to and fro and knowledge shall increase they've looked at that and they've seen in that actually the the information society the technology the information that is able to be disseminated at 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 at, at, at rapid fire you understand and more and more of the world in a sense is getting online you understand? It's getting on to that so-called, uh, we can say, even in some sense, a linear. There's a linear dimension to getting online as well. And if you over where we could go with that, that linear, there's a getting online, there's a linear way of thinking. You understand? And this is causing this kind of domino effect geopolitically, but largely due to the fact that most people's education, um, environment, you understand, and and just are not prepared, have not been really prepared, you have not been taught, you understand, uh, really real things. There's been too much distraction, in a sense, in education. You understand, there's too, been too much suppression of the B-I-B-L-E, the Mets of Caduce, and, and really a serious consideration and a thought of scriptures, you understand, of the Holy Scriptures, especially in a society that can also claim to be so-called a Judeo-Christian society like America, but the last 40 years, we've seen a, a, a change, or some will call it a retrograde, but we see a great change over the last 40 or so years, a whole generation. So Libya now is, is in the spotlight, you understand, in the spotlight of these uh, uh, revolutions and social media upheavals that have democratic, some call it protests, that have been sweeping the the so-called Arab, North African, Middle East, but also the African world. The African world is involved in this, and it's unfortunate that when even these the Middle East uh, situation and the protests going on in Egypt and and in the Horn of of Africa, they don't like to really state Africa. You notice that they, they like to say Arab world or, or, or Middle East or, you know, try to like take it out. Even though we'll say North Africa, like it's really not Africa because it's North Africa. But this is all part of scriptural prophecy, biblical prophecy, and in particular Ezekiel prophecy. So let's touch on Libya, a part of Ezekiel's prophecy. An article from 1986 by one named Ed Hinson. And we're going to read through this, and we're also going to highlight certain particular areas and go into certain details according to the, the, the leading and guiding of the Memphis do. So let us begin. Invasion of Magog and Allies. Ezekiel chapter 38 to 39. One of the most amazing prophecies in the Bible is Ezekiel's prediction that Israel, Israel, will be invaded by Russia and several Arab allies, including Libya, in the last days. Now, here's where we have to make a note and study note, especially for the Dek Amezamorit. Please journal this and note this if you haven't noted it already. 
what is meant? This is the question. What is meant? What is truly meant by the last days? What is really meant biblically, scripturally by the last days? There's, there's some great confusion on what the scripture is actually saying, what the true holy inspiration of the word of God is saying, and what a lot of people believe that it's saying. It's similar to um, the Bible says we walk by uh, faith and not by sight. And then on the next hand, there is the, set, the worldly statement of seeing is believing. People go to church on Sunday, one day a week, say we walk by faith and not by sight on this one day that's in their consciousness. And then the other six days, you know, or even after the service, there is this counter consciousness. So there's this double mindedness. This is what the Bible speaks about double mindedness. But let us get into the singularity of his imperial majesty. Let's get into the singularity of Christ in his kingly character. And let us first define ourselves and let us define these particular terminologies so we can have a clear idea what is meant by the last days what is truly meant by the last days we will we will summarize right here go into detail for those who who need those details and many might need those details when the bible states the last days it's talking about the end of the gentile dominion you understand? The end of the times of the Gentiles. Biblically speaking, you can look that up in the Bible concordance, look that up in your scriptures, go online, type in the phrase, um, the, the times of the Gentiles. Look up times of the Gentiles and there's various areas in the scriptures and perhaps others have gone into some detail of commentary on that. We would call it white supremacy. We will call it Anglo-American white supremacy, New World Order. So, but white supremacy for us, you understand, as the once lost but now found Beit Israel, it sums up the inherent idea in the times of the Gentiles. So the last days is referring to the last days of the Gentile world domination. It's important for us to emphasize that. So when you read or hear one speak about the last days, especially from the, the scriptures should make this clear, but a lot of people don't have a biblical, have a biblical education. They have all kind of degrees and accolades and gone to all type of levels in their scholastic studies, but they don't really have a real grounded and rounded biblical understanding. You understand a biblical knowledge, and, and this is kind of really amazing because they say the Bible is just a book, but most people don't really know it in spirit and in truth. So this prophecy that is found in Ezekiel, Hizkiel, chapters 37 to 39 is very, very important. And a brethren had asked her about a year or so ago about the whole Gog and Magog um, prophecy, I guess, wanted us to go into some detail we were on some of the basic uh some of the some of the basic principles the elementals that our people need to know and 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 really we're focusing more on strengthening and and building up you understand exhorting one another and building up uh, our faith as a people knowing and feeling it in the feeling it in the ear this mystic in the ear that we we're about to come into a time so we had to pre-prepare certain resources for our brothers and sisters, you understand, so that they too individually, in, 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 in the independent study individually or a more collective Bible study would have certain materials and resources. Plus we still had some time, you understand, a short space of time before we would have to be confronted with these sort of issues, such as the issues that are going on in the Middle East and that part of the world. We had to help to reestablish for the lost sheep the identity, you understand, of the lost sheep, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, who is the, the true Jews, the real black Jews or the true Hebrews, who is God's people, you understand, the chosen people, if you will. You understand? It would be hard for many to imagine that black people are God's chosen people, black people in the Americas and the Caribbean, you understand? Because they don't recognize the curse. You understand that the ancestors and those who still um, knowingly or unknowingly 
are still astray from the way have brought and 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 and, and are living in you understand this curse and Deuteronomy actually summarizes and gives us some good uh, details on that particular matter but now we're able to deal with this particular subject matter seeing that some of the basic prerequisites you understand especially for those brothers and sisters to 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 really um build a more of a faith a faith uh, faith based you understand the faith of the king of kings and his christ to 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 redeem the teachings of his imperial majesty from from all so-called pseudo heresies of the so-called rastas and a lot of others who only know half if that much of the truth but it's the half of the story that they have been told my people my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge so there's certain basic knowledge that we had to commit ourselves to disseminating before we could get to certain um, uh, particular areas of uh, studies because there are certain particular areas of scriptures that many may like and, and, and love to focus there but we want to make sure that our our people, the father's children, have a well-rounded, a well-rounded livet or liberty. You understand to say like a diet, you know, or dealing with the stewardship. You understand providing for our father's people what they need, the basic, you know, like reading, writing, and arithmetic, like food, clothing, and shelter, like those kind of basics. You understand are the basic provisions and then we can deal with more accessories and this is a accessory part of the scripture you understand but when it comes full circle and becomes main the main news especially in such a conversion of um, lines of prophetic thought and inspiration it becomes necessary then for us to deal with it if we haven't dealt with it uh, previously. So Libya, a part of Ezekiel's prophecy. Libya, a part of Ezekiel's prophecy. This prophecy is found in Ezekiel 37 to 39. Its setting is given as the time when Israel will be regathered from among the nations of the earth and brought back into her own land, the writer says. This regathering is described in chapter 37 of Ezekiel's prophecy as occurring in two stages. There's a physical return to the land and a spiritual rebirth in the land. This is very much a key and very much important for us to understand that, that the regathering of the lost sheep or the scattered sheep of Israel will occur in two stages according to Hiskiel's uh, tin beat, according to the prophecy of Ezekiel. There's one, a physical return to the land. And secondly, there's a spiritual rebirth in the land. This is very interesting. A spiritual rebirth in the land. This is followed by the prediction of an overwhelming invasion of the land vividly described in chapters 38 and chapters 39. Now, it's often called the Magog prophecy, and it's one of the most unusual in all of the Metaf, all of the scriptures, the Metaf Kedus, and has never yet, it is said, been fulfilled or fully fulfilled. Some would argue it might have been partially fulfilled, but it has never been fulfilled. Now, medieval scholars of medieval times, they tended to view Magog, Magog in the Bible as the Turks. It's a view that prevailed even until um, the so-called Puritan times or the times of the Puritans. Now, the Turks were a natural choice since they were the major enemies of Judaism and Christendom at that particular time. And their location approximated that of Magog, according to Ezekiel's description. 
the identification of Magog as Russia now, this can be traced back to the time of Martin Luther and was well established among what was known as a, a dispensationalist by the end of the 19th, the 19th century. In 1909, prior to the Bolshevik Revolution, the Schofield Bible clearly identified Magog as Russia. Dispensational scholars have generally followed uh, that identity or that view of the identity ever since. This view is certainly not new, nor is it limited to the current crisis with Libya. It has had a long line of proponents, this particular line of interpretation, um, Metargum, Targum, Targum, um, Christian, it has, has been amongst ones like C.I. Schofield, J. Frank Norris, William um, Pentengill, Alva McLean, Harry Rimmer, John Walvoord, J. Dwight Pentecost, Richard DeHaan, Theodore Epp, W. A. Criswell, and more recently, and even more recently, uh, Hal Lindsey. Probably the most influential of all was Harry Rimmer. His books, he wrote books such as The Shadow of Coming Events and The Coming War with Russia were written in the early 40s during World War II. In 1942, following Ezekiel's prophecy as his guide, Rimmer predicted that the Allies would win the war, that Italy would lose all her colonial holdings in North Africa, including Libya and Ethiopia. Well, she never really had, Italy never really had Ethiopia, invaded Ethiopia, perhaps you're talking about the Somalia and, and um, you know, Somaliland, Eritrea, and even Sudan. I mean, it's important for us to, to define this, but um, the colonial holdings, North Africa, including Libya and Ethiopia and Russia, and Russia would emerge from the war as the major enemy of Israel and the West. His pronostication was so accurate that his view received even greater acceptance in so-called conservative circles. The coming war with Russia. We're not saying anymore, as it was said before, USSR, but now it's just simply old Russia. And we're going to speak about the current, the coming um, war, the current events, and the coming war with Russia. Now, Ezekiel's prophecy, it hinges on the identity. It all hinges on identity, and much does hinge on identity, but Ezekiel's prophecy in particular, it hinges on the identity of Magog. Now, in Ezekiel, let's go to Ezekiel. Let's pull up our scriptures. Let's get our holy Bibles and have our pen and paper and let us come with a, 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 a ready mind and a heart of faith and let us study the Holy Scriptures and the book of the Seven Seals, the Metzhaf Kedus. So the coming war with Russia, the coming war in Tinbete Hizkiel, according to the Ethiopic Tinbete Hizkiel, in uh, Mi'raf uh, Salasa, Salasa Cement, chapter 38, we have Ye egzi avihirim kal wada ine in disil meta and the word of Yahweh, the word of egzi avihir, the sustainer Yahweh, Baruchu came to me, came to I saying, Yeso le Jehoi fitehina be goga laina be magoga midrlai ye mo sah. Hina be to be la wanenya lek alaya ak na betam 
Tin bitim tenagar beta. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy and prophesy against him, and prophesy against him. So the prophecy now hinges, the prophecy, the Tinbete Hizkiel, Ezekiel's prophecy, it hinges on the identity of Magog, Ezekiel 38 and 2, and her Arab allies. The nations listed in the Tinbet include Magog, Persia, also known as Iran, Ethiopia, and Ethiopia is in question here. Why we say this is because in Ezekiel's time, what was Ethiopia? Some say Ethiopia generally is Africa. Others would say that Ethiopia in this and in prophetic instances is Sudan. Some say, well, Ethiopia is Sudan. Certain parts of Mohammedan Africa is Eritrea and is Somalia, the horn of Africa. Uh, we would tend to share that view prophetically, you understand, of Ethiopia being mentioned here to be in that latter class of interpretation. You understand, generally it refers to Africa, in particular to what we know today as Sudan or the Anglo-Sudan or uh, Southern Egypt, you understand, or extended Ethiopia, you understand, but the Horn of Africa too. But it also includes Libya. It includes Gomer, which is modern Turkey, and Togarma, and Togarma is interpreted to be Armenia, Armenia, all right? So we have these particular nations, Magog, Persia being Iran, Ethiopia, Africa, but in particular Sudan and the Mohammedan parts of Africa, you understand, Libya, Gomer, Turkey, and Togarma, Armenia. Now, until recent times, this has appeared to be a rather unlikely confederacy. Now, it's, it's, it's very interesting because until quite recently, even today, many have thought that this prophecy was not likely. You understand, we understood, even from studying it previously, that certain things would have to happen. You understand, certain things would have to, there would have to be certain reconfigurations, you understand, of, of geo, uh, geo global politics, you understand, and also certain cataclysmic events, you understand, um, whether it's uh, earthquakes, whether it's economic collapse, whether it's wars, whether it's, these things would have had to happen as well to help really align and properly align this prophecy, you understand, with the current world, world events. But the political developments of the past decade make the fulfillment of this prophecy more likely, more likely than ever. Now, in the time that this article was written, you understand, Libya, part of Ezekiel's prophecy, you understand, when it was written, that's the way it seemed in 85. You understand that, that it was coming to that. So it's like we've gotten close, it seems, to the brink of prophecy, especially Tinbete Hizkia. We've gotten close to it, but it seems as though the engineers, you understand, the global engineers, the secret society, whoever they may be, have been able to work or engineer a kind of a breathing space or the politics change enough or compromises are made just enough for it not to seem as though we're in prophetic territory anymore. But there's a kind of a buildup that's going on because as tension, tensions are mounting in the so-called Near East, what was once known as the Near East, it is increasingly obvious and should become obvious that we globally, you understand, are headed toward a major confrontation of, of, of the biblical proportions that Tinbete Hizkiel actually describes. Now the term Magog, the term Magog, Minmaletano, 
what, what does it mean and, and where does it come from? Now, the term Magog, a basic level of understanding Magog in the Bible, it, it, it comes from the name of Noah's grandson through Japheth or Japheth, the forefather of the Europeans, according to that particular interpretation. Genesis chapter 10, verse 2. His descendants settled north of the Ararat Mountains in what is known today as southern Russia. Over the centuries of human history, they were called by various names. They were called the Scythians or the Rus, the Rus. And you might have heard of Belarus, Belarus, Belarus. So they were known as the Scythians and also the Rus, R-U-S-S. Eventually, these peoples, the Scythian, the Rus, the, the descendants of Magad, they um, intermarried with the Slavs, with the Slavs, slaves, the Slavs, right? And Tartars to form what we know today as the Mardin, the Mardin people of Russia. Now, you, you know that there's something known as a Black Russian. And this is, this is the key, too, because, see, black folks, because of slavery, because of America, because of miseducation, they really don't know um, how, how big the world really is, like how much and, and how many places that, that black people have been. You understand because of the Eurocentric miseducation. So that's an important note as well. But moving forward, the leader of Magog is described, of the land of Magog, is described as Gog, according to scripture. So the leader of this land of people, this great land of people, Magog, is described as Gog. He's the leader of Magog, the chief prince, or better, the prince of Rosh, the prince of Rosh. And Rosh, R-O-S-H, Rosh, as in Rosh Hashanah, we say Aras, but their pronunciation say Arosh. Some say Arais, but they say Arosh. An ancient name, Arosh, is an ancient name for Russia. Now, beyond this, beyond this, the identity of Meshach and uh, Tubal as Moscow and Tobolsk, Tobolsk, to some, it may seem stretched. It seems a little stretched that, that Meshach, Meshach would be Moscow and Tubal would be Tobolsk. That seems stretched, but just put a little question mark there and a little room for further, further notes as we move forward. What is clear? Now, what is clear? We want to touch on the things that are clear. What is clear in the Tinbit, what is clear in the prophecy is that a great Russian nation from the, quote, north parts, from the north parts. Now, how do we know this? How do we know that it's from the north parts? Because in verse 15, it says, Antem, ka'antem agara bizu hizba hulacho befereso chalaya yetek emmetu it says, And thou shall come from thy place out of the north parts. Kasemein darcha kasifrachu timetalachu. Thou and many people with thee all of them riding, all of them riding upon horses. Very interesting, very, very, very Russian, if you understand that period of Russia, riding upon, uh, riding upon horses. A great company and a mighty army. Now, now the Soviet Union may have fallen, so forth and so on, you know, the Soviet Union, but most people don't understand what the Soviet Union really is. The Soviet Union wasn't Russia. Russia still has a great army. So what is clear in the Tinbid is that a great, 
a great uh, nation from uh, from or Kasemain, a great nation, Kasemain Darcha, from the northern, the northern, they say parts, but more correctly, the Gus and the Guest, if we translate the, the Amharic or the revised Amharic Bible, Kasemain Darcha, from the edge of the north from the edge of the north, not just northern parts, as King James might have it, but from the edge of the north, will invade Israel in what is known in verse 8 and verse 16, verse 8 and verse 16, as the latter days. After many days thou shalt be visited in the in what is described as the Hwalenyao, the latter, the latter Behwalenyaum Zemin, the latter years or the latter age, the latter age, the latter the last age or the latter age or the last part of the age, it may be interpreted, thou shall come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of what many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, they shall dwell safely, all, it says all of them, and in verse 16 of the same chapter says, Midrinima tishafin zen in the demena, be his baby Israel laya te wet ale, be hualenyo zemin yonal, go go hoi, be oina cho fita, be tek adeso who a bihigize ahzaba yaukun zen, be midre laya met ahalo. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land. And the heathen may, that the heathen, for the reason that the heathen, the Ahazab, the nation, the peoples, may know me when I shall be sanctified. When I shall be sanctified, notice that, when I shall be holy, in thee, or it can be interpreted, betek adeso hu gize. I shall be holy against you. Not completely holy, but not, not completely saying in the sense of holy. Bete, I shall be set apart against you. Betek adeso hu gize. Ahazav yauk unzen. Be midrelai amet ahalo. O Gog, O Gog, before your eyes. So we learn that it's Kasamein Darcha from the edge of the north, the northern parts, um, 38 and 15 of Ezekiel. They will invade Israel in the Hualenyao Zemin, the latter days of the latter age, 38 verses 8 and verse 16. Now, Israel, how is Israel described? Israel is described by the prophet as, interestingly, dwelling safely, end quote, in a land of unwalled villages, in a land of unwalled villages. And we have this in the same chapter at verse, at verse 11. Kufu asabinima tasbale indihima tilale. Now, 
ሁላቾ ሳይፈሩ ያለቅጥርና ያለመወርወሪያ ያለመዝጊያም ወርም ይቀመጡ ገባሎ and thou shall say I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars and having neither bars nor gates. This is a very important very important um description that they would be dwelling first of all it says that they would be dwelling uh they'll be dwelling safely you understand they'll be dwelling safely uh and they will be unwalled villages at no time since his kiel gave this tin beat has such a description of israel been true not even after the return from the babylonian captivity there hasn't been no time nor has the invasion described by the nabi the prophet ever occurred in israel's tariq in israel's history until until these present hours as the time ticks down the signs of the times as these signs of the times are tick 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 ticking away but what is the arab what is the arab the harab connection to this the arab connection why russia why in the world would russia you understand why russia would ally with the arab states listed in this tin beat has puzzled certainly many uh biblical scholars prior to the latter half of the 20th century and prior to the events that we witness now in the so-called 21st century but the rise of modern technology especially this information superhighway and social media with this but the modern technology is largely dependent on oil we have to understand that has made it all too 